one more thing. I was thinking about this because I have a note card in my pocket and on it, it says tabula rasa, which means blank slate. It's like Latin for blank slate. And then I opened my Bible app and it said in 2 Corinthians 5, for we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each of us may receive what is due us the things done in the body, whether good or bad. And the verse before that says, so we make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it, which means whether we're living or dead, according to physical body. But those two things, tabula rasa, having a clean slate and then appearing before God, it's a, it's, it's a beautiful thing because you read the Bible and it says, his mercy is new every morning. It talks about how we are constantly improving. We appear before God, but he has such mercy on us. So it's, it's a good balance to say he has mercy, but then we also have a reason to improve, you know? Not that we fear being in front of God in a bad way, but we want to make, when you read the Bible and you know who he is, you want to make him happy. It's not like you're scared of making him sad. You see, there's a difference. When, if any of you guys have had like a really, really good parent or a really, really good coach or a really, really good teacher, like you respect them so much, it's not, it's not like, and they also teach you in such a beautifully loving way that like when you're doing homework or when you're practicing your sport or when you come home to your parents, like you love them too. You know, they're, they don't teach you or coach you or raise you like, if you do the wrong thing, I'm gonna be pissed. They're like, yo, I want you to do the right thing. I love you so much that I'm gonna give you everything and that I love you so much that when you aren't living up to your potential, I'm gonna say, look, you can do so much better and that's why I'm gonna push you to do better. See what I mean? If, if you haven't experienced that, it's hard to understand. That's why I feel like a lot of people have a hard time with God because a lot of us have had experiences where we get punished negatively and we're, we're always operating out of fear negative version of fear there's a very positive fear that's like a respect you know and if you do look into the definition of fear there are both sides fear is not always negative right you can have a positive reason to not want to do something bad you see what i mean it doesn't have to always be negative okay so those two things together that's the intro to this little thing that i wanted to say it doesn't relate, I don't know, but I'm gonna say it. We all, all of us, dude, body of Christ. I'm in this little idea of wanting to talk about the body of Christ. I'm one person in the body of Christ, just like you. And we are in the same body, but we have different uses or functions. Remember the verse in the Bible that says, can the hand do what the foot does? Can the eye do what the ear does or the nose does? No, I am a certain part of the body. Me, I'm one little part. You are a certain part as well. You're different. We both might be fingers, but maybe I'm a thumb and you're a pointer. They can't do the same thing, but they work together. You can pick stuff up. It's crazy. That's why God says body of Christ. But we have to realize, although we're in the same body and we believe the same God and we have the same outlook, we have to realize that we're different. Like my, very practically, I believe and I know for a fact God gave me what I do. He gave me talents to do what I do, which is film videos and, and create things artistically and be able to talk to people and be somebody who encourages. I realized that recently that like, that's a strength of mine. When I was younger, I didn't realize because I would always be talking positive and say, come on guys, don't you just see the outlook on life? And then I would read the Bible and it says, if you're somebody who encourages, encourage. If you're someone who teaches, teach. If you're someone who Whatever, everyone has a different one. But someone who, uh, if you're someone who prophesies, prophesy. If you're someone who, I don't remember all the, the list, but they're all different. They're similar, but they're different, right? Like a teacher can encourage, but an encourager, everyone's different. You get what I'm saying, right? And I realized that that's what I am. I'm an, art, an artist, someone who loves reading and writing and traveling and languages. I enjoy the artistic process of working with people to create something that can be visual or audio or anything like that. So that's my role. You know what I'm saying? And I do believe that I've been given a gift to 
at least be comfortable communicating, right? Like I do enjoy talking to people. I do enjoy learning about their stories. I do enjoy going to new countries with no plan and walking down the street and saying, hey man, like, can you help me get there? Like that's something that I love doing. It's a very small example, but I love that. Some people don't like it at all, right? Something I don't like, which everybody has pluses and minuses about them. So a plus for me would be like, I can talk to people very easily and find myself at home when I'm so far away from where I grew up. That's, that, that's a benefit, you know? But something that I'm not good at is planning things out. And I see people that have this skill. Of course it can be learned, but some of us just have a, an innate ability and desire and a love for that. Some people wake up and they're like, they're organizing their, their clothes, their phone, their schedule, and it just comes so natural. Like me, it comes so natural. Like I've had people ask me, how do you do that? It just, I don't know, it's just so natural for me to, hey, I'm gonna buy a ticket to Germany. And people are like, oh, do you have any plans? I'm like, no. They're like, I, I could never do that. And, and then I'm realizing more, it's just because God put that in me as just like a natural thing. But then me, I see people do very, seemingly more simple things, like organize their schedule, you know, plan meetings with people, do their taxes, uh, have all of their taxes in line. Look, last May I spent this much money on this, this, and this, I can write this off. Or they say, you know what, I'm, I'm working on a new project, my day, Monday through Friday is all planned from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day. I look at that, me, look at that, and I'm like, how the heck? That's, that's way harder for me than just buying a ticket, going to a new country, meeting some people, finding a job in the first week, and just living there for a year. You know what I mean? Like, it's crazy how our perspectives are shifting, and nothing is necessarily easier. Maybe in the eyes of the world, going to a new country is so much easier, but for the person that that's easy for, the taxes is the thing that's harder. You know what I mean? Did I say that right? I might have like mixed it up. Going over there in the eyes of the world might seem harder than doing taxes, but eyes of the world, eyes of pe some people. But then for me and people that have like a little bit more like artistic, scattery, non-organized brain, we look at people doing taxes and sitting down at the desk and just being super organized and having a perfect schedule. And we're like, how the frick do you do that? You know what I mean? All this to say, we're part of the body of Christ. We're supposed to work together. And that's why another human example, when you see businesses run well, they have a team. And each member of the team is good at one thing. One member is really good at organizing, having a schedule, making phone calls, telling the other members, hey, look, you gotta be here at this time, the deadline's on Friday, please speed up your work. Uh, this is not, right? Manage the finances. And then another person on that exact same, in that exact, exact same company, they're the ones that have the ideas. They sit in a room, they have a whiteboard, and they say, oh my gosh, if we had this person, and we went to this country, and then we like, interviewed this guy, we can make an amazing movie. And the person that is doing taxes is like, good for you, I, I don't need to know that, or I don't, I never even saw that, that's cool, you know what I mean? And then without the tax person and the, the organizing, then that video would never get done as well as it could. And I know from firsthand experience, trying to get all these things done, dude, I'm so, dude, I, so many opportunities to this, this, and this, business, I just like slips through my fingers sometimes. So I've learned, I've observed, and I've seen in real life, not necessarily in the Christian body. And that's the beautiful thing about the Bible. It's like it's true and everywhere. It might not even be a Christian company, but you can see what God's talking about in the Bible when he says the body works better together. You can see that in companies that run well. They have different types of people, right? And we have to rejoice in our own Strengths. First of all, you gotta like, you gotta realize that, you, that you're you're very unique, and then improves the, those gifts and be around people that not only will encourage you in those gifts, but that you can partner with to work on something together. That's a beautiful thing, and it gives us joy every day to work for something hard, or to work hard for something. You know, sharpen each other. Uh, and then this is the point of the whole video, or the, the reason why I even started filming this video, is that each one of us, with Christ, 
has a very unique story. The impetus behind the story, like the thing that's pushing us forward, that's galvanizing us to go is the same. It's God's word, it's that strength, it's that belief that we're gonna be in heaven someday with him, with the whole body of Christ. Like we, we read the words like we're all going off the same energy, but just like a battery, if the, if the body, if the Bible's a battery, that's the energy that we all have, you put batteries in so many different things and they all do different things. You put batteries in a radio, you can hear stuff. You put batteries in a flashlight, you can see stuff. You put batteries in a, the little aroma machine that, you know, what is that thing called? I have one right there. I just forgot the name, I'm blanking. You know, the steam comes out and you put the essential oils inside of it. Then you can smell stuff. There's so many things you put batteries in. God is the energy, the battery, but we all do different things. And when they're all together, it's such a beautiful thing. Just like our body, like God put our body together with all the different parts. It's the same metaphor I'm talking about. And I can touch things, I can taste things, I can use my touch to taste things. It's just like a beautiful artist, artistic thing. God is literally the ultimate artist, but he's also the ultimate organizer. So like God is the ultimate thing, team player, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It's too beautiful to even comprehend through speech and what is that called? Auditory? Yeah. We can't comprehend it. We have, to, we have to like live it somehow. But yes, this is the point. Remember you're unique and remember that your journey with God, although powered by the same battery, which is the word and, and Jesus who died for us and the Holy Spirit, God leading you through these things. Although we have the same battery, your story is so beautifully unique. So, so. And you should rejoice in that, like me. As an artist, I should rejoice that I get to go to different countries, learn different languages, film videos, meet people, read books. Like I read a book and I get so happy. And some people, they don't. But I, I shouldn't look at them and say, oh, they're not happy, I, I shouldn't be happy. What, what's my problem? No, I do my thing. And then when I get to mesh with other people, because we all get to mesh with other people at some point. You know what I mean? I get to travel to another country, meet people, and maybe I'm meeting people who are really organized, but like, we meshed in that point. I traveled to another country and I met awesome people. It's like those like concentric circles, you know? We're, we're, we're Venn diagrams, remember when you're a kid, there's like the two circles and then they meet, meet in the middle. But there's that one part that's unique. We all have like a one part that's, that's just me and God. You know, just you and God. Not everybody, or there's not always gonna be somebody in the world that understands a part of you. There's gonna be that part that's alone and God wants that time with you. He wants to be with you. In that, and I believe that that's why he gave us all very unique lives. So that there, we have our, our time with the body of Christ, but then there's also like that very intimate time with God where, he's, where you're like, dang God, like you really made me a musician. You really made me a, like a lawyer. Like I love law and just understanding where it came from and from Plato to Socrates and all this, this is my thing. What, you have that, everyone has that. It's just a fact. If you, if you think about it, you have one thing that you can't really, get other people to be as excited as you about. That's a very clear sign that that's your thing. It's not a sign since other people don't have the same passion as you that you shouldn't do it. It's a very clear sign that you should do it. And you can bring your part to the body of Christ. You can be the little finger because if you're not yourself, then the hand's gonna be like this and it's not gonna work as well. So you do your thing, partner with other people. Like if you're a finger, you're gonna partner with these four other dudes right here. But this guy's gonna be a little different than this guy, for sure. They're gonna be similar, but they're gonna be different. So rejoice in the fact that you are not the exact same as everyone else. I think oftentimes, especially in a world where we're constantly looking at everyone else's life online, it's just comparison 24 seven without even knowing. So be careful when you're comparing yourself subconsciously and you're like looking at a photo online, you're like, dude, they do this. It's like, yeah, man, you can do what they do in part, maybe the person you're looking at is like, has a good fashion and you wanna do that, but, or whatever, there's a billion things. Maybe they're being a musician and you wanna do that, but don't copy their entire style. Get inspired and do your own thing. You say, man, I really like this melody. I really like how this writer writes. But, but write, be inspired, and then t have the courage, that's it. Have the courage to do 
that which only you can do and that which only you were made to do. God is the perfect artist. He made you to do something that only you can do, literally. Like there's literally nobody else that will ever be like you ever. And that's not some cute quote that you find online. There's literally no one in the world that has your circumstances, your parents, your birth date, your joys in life. There's no one that will ever, ever be born at the same time as you to the parents that you were born to in the city that you were born to that likes what you like. So you gotta believe with all those things combined, which is like thousands and millions of things, even down to your hair color and the school you went to and the people that you dated. It's like you learn from every single thing that you have ever encountered. And that's made you to think a certain way and to do exactly what you were meant to do. Even your hardships. I am 100% attesting to that. There's so many things I've gone through that are super hard. And I'm like, why, 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 why? And, and I'm beginning to see, oh, it's because that actually sharpened me to think differently. Where before I was just a little immature, happy-go-lucky without even thinking, oh, there's bad things that happen, you know? I'm a little more aware. And that happens until you get older. That's why older people are usually a lot more calm, at peace, not worried, just doing their thing. And thank God. So rejoice in your uniqueness. Enjoy the time with the body of Christ, sharing ideas and, 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 and working together, but then also have the courage enough to branch out and do your thing with God. Ask God for help and do it. Just do it. You know what I mean? Make that song, go to the law school, read that book, whatever it is that you know, everyone knows. Everyone knows. If I, if, if I had to ask every single person to write something down on a piece of paper, what would you do? If you could do anything, everyone would know. So just start working towards that. God put it in you for a reason. Um, yeah, little encouragement. Enjoy the unique, beautiful journey. Because when I think of the unique, beautiful journey, beautiful journey that God gave me, I get really excited. And we have to believe God made us for good things. He didn't make us to be sad and scared all the time. Dude, we rejoice. Even the apostles, they rejoiced in their suffering, dude. That's the thing that... At, you're supposed to be sad about. And, and literally they were like, we got to suffer for God. That's crazy. How much more are you gonna be stoked to do something that you actually wanna do? And when the suffering comes like God said it will, dude, let's rejoice. Why? Because this life is gone. Here today, gone tomorrow, bro. It's gone. Like I'm already gone. I'm 30 years old. Even if I live another 70 years to be 100, 30 years went like that. Another 30, boom, I'm 60. Boom, I'm 90. Boom, I'm gone. You know what I mean? That was three snaps. I'm three snaps away. Because my life up until this point has been like, bow. So yeah, so rejoice, man. Rejoice. That's the message. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice.